at donandgino.com. Now, back to your friends, Don and Gino. Of course, we want to wish you happy holidays here with the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show. Don Getling, Gino Franti in the house. Actually, we're in the vault right now. Would you like the keys to the vault? The keys to the vault can be found on our website, right? There you go, Gino. Nicely done. (laughs) (laughs) The website is donandgino.com, and like we said, it is our hub of information. You can access all of our shows, all of our highlights, and as I mentioned before, one of the things that I love is you can also access the progress our economy's made by watching the subject matter of our show over the last two and a half years. Uh, I think for the first six months, it was about distress, 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 bankruptcy, distress, distress. And so it's kind of nice that now we're talking about positive things, well, gains, dis- jobs. Yeah. I mean, dire- distressed homes, the amount of foreclosures is down 30% just from a year ago, down 30%. That's huge. Yeah, and I believe last year it was down 14 or 16%. So we almost don't have a foreclosure problem. And I know you might still be encountering some difficulty in your own personal life, but on a national level, we have a very small foreclosure problem. That's right. right that's right. Okay, so we have with us a special guest, Mr. Carl Goldman from KHTS himself, the guy that gave us this opportunity to be on the show now for two and a half years, and he didn't even kick us off yet. How about that, Carl? I know, pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> Good. You know, I, before you ask your, your next question, I, I just wanted to pop in and, on a comment on something you guys just said. And, and I watch, I'm watching right now the new developers out here, our two big ones, Lennar and Pardee, and they can't build the homes fast enough. But you're absolutely right. You know, it's not like the old days where they can come in and do an entire phase of a thousand homes at once. Now the banks are forcing them to do it in on streets and do 20, 30 at a time, as, right. as you guys well know. But they can't build the, as soon as they build the 20, 30, th- those homes are sold. People yep. are already moving in. Well, well what's we amazing. Think about it, we have, you know, how much pent up demand did we have for the last, you know, six years? Yeah, and, and what's amazing to me is that, especially here in Santa Clarita, those are expensive homes. The brand new homes that are going up are not two and three hundred thousand dollar homes like they used to be. Most of what's being put up today is six, seven, high eight. fives, eight. Right. Um, so when you look at that, that tells me that we have a real good job base. That you know people are making money now, especially now that there's no stated income and everything's fully verified. You're talking about people that are making you household. You qualify. You have to actually yeah. qualify. Yeah. Uh, household incomes of one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to afford one of those homes, and the fact that they're flying off the shelves is a testament that the economy, at least locally, is doing very well. Well, the other thing is we have to tip our hats to our city, to New Hall Land and the original development of this, and also to our schools, our school district. That's that's one of the great assets that we have, is that we've got incredible public schools. So someone down in, in the valley or down in Los Angeles, they're challenged because LA Unified has many, many, many challenges, and most of, the, most of the, those people do not want to put their kids in LA Unified. So when you start doing the math of private school down in the valley versus coming up here to Santa Clarita and putting your kids in public school that's better than most uh-huh. private schools down in Los Angeles it's a no-brainer yeah well yeah. I, I'm a testament to that right because yeah. I grew up in LAUSD I grew up in, in the valley and uh, went to a private school for high school for those same reasons and ultimately when we had our first children we said let's move out to Santa Clarita so the schools are a major driver and like you mentioned it's not only the fact that they're better than some of the private schools. One of the things that the private schools have a problem with that not a lot of people talk about is the social aspect. Uh, private schools being so small do miss out on the social aspect, like public schools have a great social aspect. And children that come out of private schools don't have that social development. Even if they get the educational development, they don't get the social development they do in public school. Well, that, and, and you remember, you know, I mean, most of our guests uh, are Santa Clarita Valley residents, usually 15 years plus, and almost every single one we ask why Santa Clarita schools comes up. Almost all of them, they love the community, planned community, thanks to New Holland and Farm, it's one of the best planned communities around, safest cities, but also most often they say it's the schools. I brought, I, I moved out here for, to put my kids through school here. And it's a great job market up here, as you mentioned. It's, it's not just a bedroom community anymore. We actually, I, I believe for every, everyone who's commuting out, and I think that's about 30% of the workforce now are commuting out of Santa Clarita. But for everyone that's, that's uh, commuting out, two are com- commuting in wow. to Santa Clarita, or, or close to two. So we've got an incredible job base here of really good-paying white collar jobs yeah and i know that our unemployment numbers here in santa clarita are always two to three percent less than the national average so we're doing really well no doubt about it 
Okay, so let's, uh, let's touch on a little bit uh, about your history of being involved in radio. You've been involved in the radio industry since 1974? Yeah, really my whole life. Uh, well, you Jer started when you were, what, five? Jer well, <laughs> really, I, you know, my first memory, J J Jerry and I are both second generation radio. Oh, wow. So, so both our dads were in radio. Both our dads tried to keep us out of radio, and <laughs> it didn't work too well. And and so, so my first memory, I I remember that, you know, um, my dad was program director of a radio station in Fresno, and I couldn't have been more than two years old. And I can remember sitting on the engineer's lap in the studio. So, so I was wow. at home in studios that that go back to long before there were tape recorders back in the acetate days. And, and then um, both, uh, in, in my case, I, I wasn't going to get into radio. I, I, I majored in communications in college, came out to, to USC to go to grad school at the Annenberg School of Communications, wanting to get into film and communication management, which is what my master's degree was in. And in order to pay my way through, co through grad school, I started working at K100 in Los Angeles, right at the time, for those who are old enough, they remember the old KHJ. Uh, K100 became the KHJ of the 70s by having uh, folks like Robert W. Morgan, the real Don Steele, Billy oh yeah. Pearl, Eric Chase, Jerry Butler, all B.R. Bradbury. Those were the guys I started working with oh when wow. I first came here only to pay my way through college, and I got sucked in, fell in love with it. Uh, well, I'm uh, glad you, you uh, alluded to that. You fell in love with it because obviously... I mean, you got involved in it. Uh, you know, we worked for KIQQ. Right, that was K100. Okay, yeah. that was okay. You worked there for what? Seven years. Worked or so? there for seven years through the 70s with all the, all the greats there. Yeah, big uh, names, uh, classic yeah, names. Yeah, classic names. And and we were owned by a, a company at the time that that was the biggest of the syndicators called Drake Chenault, Bill Drake and Gene Chenault. They were the ones who really put KHJ on the map and the and the whole RKO chain, and were the fathers of Top 40 as we know oh it wow. today. So so I, I really learned from the best and also then learned the syndicated side, the national side of radio th because Drake Chenault was the largest of the syndicators. Back then, that was before satellites, so they were sending, the, the syndication was done on big real-to-real tapes. Real horseback? to real tapes. And, <laughs> 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 and you, worse than horseback, it was U.S. mail. They <laughs> send the tapes out to the radio stations and and so so it was not necessarily timely material right right it just when they got it then they could replay it right once right. they did receive it by horseback chino <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's okay i get i get a hard time because he's such a puppy he gives me a hard time about my age as well then hey then I, when, I, when I always forget what you know you're bringing up stuff and i'm like i don't know anything about that yeah <laughs> exactly i think i read it in a history book <laughs> when uh, satellites came in in the early 80s we uh, I, I left k100 and we created a company, I got to come on board a company called Transtar, that was one of the f first two satellite radio companies out there, oh wow. and it has grown, and now it's Westwood, Westwood One. Westwood One, so right? Yeah, so over years of mergers, first with Dick Clark's company, and then later Westwood One, then Dial Global, and now it's back to Westwood One again. I, uh, during the 80s, it was a renaissance with, with satellites coming in and new territory. So that was, that was a very cool experience. And, and also, we had the dream team there. So I had two, two careers. And that's where I met Jerry also. I so was wondering about that because yeah. she was head of finance and human relations in, uh, at Westwood One. She was, yeah, but prior to that, her dad was in L.A. radio. And, and he uh, got her a job at KZLA one summer as a fill-in receptionist. Same thing, just to pay, pay the, the way for, for school and pay some bills. She got sucked in, fell in love with, with radio, so worked at KZLA for a number of years and then then s moved from KZLA over to Transtar, and that's where we met. Oh, that's, that's a good story. We are wondering how and you guys are so involved in radio together. And what's really funny is I, her dad worked with me at K100 for throughout the 70s, so I knew her dad and mom for seven, eight, nine years before I ever met Jerry. And wow. they, they let... Jerry marry you? Yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just tuned in, we're, we're having a great and really fun conversation with Carl Goldman with KHTS. Give us a little rendition of how he and Jerry got into radio and are so passionate about it, very passionate about it. We've seen that uh, being part of KHTS now for almost over two and a half years now, and they are heavily involved in radio in general. Um, you, you were alluding to how you started in L.A., and of course you came out to Santa Cruz 
um, with uh, initially it wasn't with KHTS. Well, it actually was. Uh, the the story, short version of that story is in 1990. Uh-oh. We're going to have to touch Whoop. base on that a little more. Okay, we're going to touch back on how Carl and Jerry ended up in Santa Cruz Valley. And, help, and thankfully to all of us, uh, a part of KHDS, and also their current projects they're working on that you need to know about that are invaluable to our community. When we come back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show on your hometown station right here in the vault, on the Don and Gino Real Estate Finance Show. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Shannon Fosna, the very fortunate show producer of the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Radio Show. Every Thursday from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Time, live on AM 1220 KHTS. If you would like to find out more about our wonderful program, please go to our website at donandgino.com. You can find two and a half years worth of past show clips, video clips from our expert contributors, and on our YouTube channel. And please like our Facebook page at the Don and Gino Radio. If you would like to contact me about becoming an expert contributor or know of one we have to have on the show, please contact me at 661 401 7807 or Don at gmail.com. Be sure to get involved with our program by joining us in the Vault Media Studio at donandgino.com and by clicking on the listen and chat button on the right. We thank you and look forward to hearing from you real soon. 